Hello and welcome back to the Code Circus. Today we are going to talk about Python tuples. Now, I like to make comparisons to other languages. Uh, we talked about lists in the last couple sections and we said lists were much like array lists. Well, it turns out Python tuples are much like arrays in other languages in that they're immutable. Once you set up the array, you can't change it. You can't change its size. Um, you, you can't even change anything that's inside the list. So let's dive in. And first, let's talk about why do we have tuples inside of Python when we already have lists? Why do we need them? Why do we need this immutable thing? Well, first, they take less memory because they can do less. And sometimes that is an advantage. It gives you the ability to work more efficiently with data. It gives you the ability to work faster with data. So if you can come up with a list and you know it's not going to change, then using a tuple rather than a list makes more sense because it's faster, more efficient, and uh, saves time. Now, for most of us beginning programmers, that's not really all that important. But as you start developing larger programs and you're talking about large scale applications and where you're storing them, are you setting them over the internet? Are you storing them on a device like a phone? Memory issues become problematic and speed issues become problematic as you're sorting large amounts of data. So understanding when to use a tuple, when to use a list is important, but for the most part for us, really the only importance for us to know is that we don't mix them up. Um, so tuples are just like lists in that they're ordered. So both are ordered in index 0, 1, 2, 3, starting at 0, but the tuples do not change, meaning we cannot change, add, or remove items after the tuple has been created. And they do allow duplicates much like the lists do. So the big thing in there is that they're unchangeable. So here, let's dive right in and take a look at an example of a tuple. One of the big differences is that we don't use brackets to define a tuple. We use parentheses. Apple, orange, cherry, strawberry. So we use parentheses rather than brackets. We can print it out the same way we can print lists. I don't know why I'm using that version of capitalization. It's terrible, isn't it? Actually, let me switch this uh, to just, let's just make this my tuple and use the correct snake case. My tuple. There we go. I want to use this crazy case there. So we can print it out the same way we can print out with lists. We can find the length using the length operator. So we can just print out the len of my tuple. Just like we could with lists. Um, the only thing we have to be careful of is that if we create a tuple with only one item in it, okay, I'm going to do it first with what might seem like the right way, where you would just list it as one tuple. The problem is when I print the type of this, you're going to find out something happened. It's of class string. So Python looks at this, if I put in a single item in a tuple, or at least what I think is a tuple, it treats it as a string because it's just parentheses. It doesn't really read it anything different. So if you want to make a single item tuple, you have to include the comma. Now when I run it and look at, it says it's a class tuple. 
So this is really important if you're going to create a single item tuple. Uh, why you might want to create a single item tuple, I'm not quite sure. That would be something that we need to really worry about in this course. But you could create a single item tuple. We can have um, any data type we want to put in the tuple. We can have strings, we can have numbers, we can have booleans. Uh, it can also contain different data types. It can mix and match, like we can put in strings and numbers and booleans. And then we have the same kind of issue when we do the different data types inside of tuples in that we have to know which values are coming off. But it's a little bit easier with a tuple because we know the tuples aren't going to change. So if we do a string and then a number and then a boolean, we know that that's always going to be a string, a number, then a boolean. So that's sometimes more helpful than in a list where we know it could possibly change. We could switch some things in and out. Um, we can actually use the uh, constructors like we did with our list. And the constructor would be the word tuple. So this tuple equals tuple parentheses, parentheses, hat, dog, totally random. So this will also create a tuple for us and we can print this tuple. Again, notice this is all parentheses when we do this. We want to make sure that we're using parentheses here, not the brackets. And we can see we print out class tuple from before, but then we say <coughs> hat and dog. The way we access tuples is the same way that we access lists, and it's literally the same way in that they use the brackets. I kind of wish they really didn't use the brackets, but they do use the brackets to get to individual values. Let's say I'm going to print my tuple and I'm going to do item number two in my tuple, which I don't remember what it was. We'll have to go back and look. Oops, put a bracket, not curly Q. So we can see item number two is cherry. So when you're indexing individual items, you do still use the brackets. I know that could be a bit confusing. So it's something you'd have to study and practice with. Part of the reason why they use the brackets is because you have the same kind of indexing in that, you remember the range? We can do ranges with it. We can also do negative values. Let's say negative one in here for my tuple. This time we get strawberry, which we remember it was the last item in the list. Let me clear out some of these extra stuff here. So we can do the negative one indexing. Negative two, we refer to the last indexing. We can do ranges of indexing. So if I go from two to four, it's going to give me cherry and strawberry because it's index zero, one, two, and then three, and then four across, of course, is the list. If I do zero to two, it's going to give me the first two items, which are zero and one, apple and orange. Uh, we can, again, eliminate some of these and say the beginning to two, which will do apple and orange. We could say one and put nothing at the end. And then it'll be orange, cherry, and strawberry. So it basically skips the zero because we're starting at one and going through the end. So we did all those things with our ranges within our um, tuple. We can also use is in. So we can say print apple in my tuple. And we can see we get a true because apple's inside the tuple. So a lot of the same things that were true about tuples, uh, excuse me, were true about lists are also true about tuples, minus all of the methods. They're, the add, the remove, all that, none of that can exist inside of a tuple because they're immutable. You cannot change them. Let's go ahead and try and see what happens if we go ahead and try to change my tuple. Um, I can't go ahead and say my tuple item zero equals hat. Let's run that. We get a syntax error. 
This verifies that my tuple is immutable. You cannot change that no matter what you want to do. So if you wanted to change it, what could you do? Let's say you really, really, really wanted to change it. Well, there is a cheat. Uh, you'd have to store everything that's in my tuple as a list. So we could create a list that has everything in the tuple. And you would do that using what's called a casting. So we could take um, my tuple and just call it my tuple list. And we would cast it using the word list my tuple. And now we have a new list that has all the abilities of lists. It's just now, um, oops, let me get rid of the thing I'm trying to change there. Here we go. And now we have a new list. You notice it has brackets. We still also have my tuple. And you could notice the difference. The, the list has the brackets and the tuple has the parentheses. My tuple list um, is mutable. You can change it, but the my tuple is not changeable. It's immutable. So if you wanted to add items or do anything like that, you still have to convert it to a list. You can't make any changes whatsoever to the tuple. It is what it is. And you'd have to convert your tuple to some other kind of data structure in order to make any kind of changes you want. Uh, we can do what's called unpacking a tuple. And that's where we take all the values that are inside of the tuple and we assign it to variables. So for example, I can say, uh, let's do, let's just do letters A, B, C, D. One, two, three, four items, four variables. And I'm going to say equals my tuple. So this is going to take every value that's in the tuple, a, apple, orange, cherry, strawberry, and assign them to the variables respectively, a, b, c, and d. So now when I print a, it's going to print out apple. And if I print B, it's going to print orange. If I print C, it's going to print cherry. If I print D, it's going to print strawberry. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, they also have this really unique thing uh, called an asterisk when you're unpacking. Suppose I don't do A, B, C, and D. Suppose I do A and then B, but I put an asterisk in front of the B. When I do this, I get a for Apple, but when I print B, I have a new list that is orange, cherry, and strawberry. So that's another way of kind of unpacking the tuple. We don't have to create and specifically construct a new list by doing an assignment. If we use that asterisk symbol, we can unpack the tuple into a straight list. So we could just do asterisk B. Well, we can't do asterisk B. We have to do uh, A comma asterisk B. Um, and that would unpack the list. I wonder if we could get just everything into a list just by putting this comma here. Let me just try that. Nope, it still doesn't do it. So you have to at least take one thing out of the tuple and then unpack the rest into a list. So I guess if you wanted to create a complete list, then you need to do that assignment. But this will be able to unpack it to strings and then also to um, lists of partial data. All these things could be useful depending upon how you want to do your data structure. Uh, what kinds of things do you want to put in to your data and how do you want to organize it? Python really involve, has really given lots of different ways of organizing information for us. Suppose we even wanted to do an asterisk and then a C. So this will take A, the first item. Uh, it'll take how many ever items there are between apple and strawberry and store them in B. 
and then take strawberry. So we do that, we can see get orange and cherry right there in the middle of the list. So again, they can kind of do all kinds of different um, structures with our tuple. Uh, we can't really um, combine tuples without putting them into a new data structure. We could add two tuples together, concat them together, but store them in another tuple. Uh, we could store it in another list. Uh, we can also do this really kind of interesting thing with multiplication. Uh, if I wanted to, I could create a new tuple here. My new tuple. And I could say it is my tuple times three. Let me get rid of this other code here. And I'm going to print out my new tuple. And you can see what happened is it did the tuple into a new tuple and took all the contents and repeated it three times. So you have that ability to do multiplication within tuples. There are two methods associated with tuples. That's it. There are only two built-in methods. The first one is dot count, which returns the number of times a specified value occurs within a tuple. So if you have repeated items, let's say we do take care of this cherry here and make it an apple. And I say, actually, we'll just take our other, let me undo that. We'll just take our new tuple and do this. So I can say count Oops, I should do it the other way. My tuple dot count. And I could say apple. And it should return three because we repeated it three times with that asterisk. And you can see that it returns three. Uh, the other thing is index. And it searches the tuple for a specified value and returns the position of where it's found. So if I do index for Apple, it's going to tell me the first time it's found. Not all the times that it's found, just the first occurrence. We know Apple appears three times in the list, but it's only going to give us the first time through the list. So there are a lot of things in common with tuples and lists. Uh, the main difference between tuples and lists is that a tuple is not something you can change in any way, shape, or form once you create it. Lists are changeable and also include a whole bunch of methods that allow you to change it in all kinds of interesting ways. They do index the same way. They do allow multiple different types. They do allow repeated values, both the same. Uh, they, they do have the same kind of range functionality. Uh, tuples do have this extra thing of called unpacking and allow you to split it up into other items. So that's you know our tuples and our lists. <coughs> Next time we'll take a look at some more uh, interesting things that are not indexed and do not allow duplicates. That's all for now. I'll see you next time.